Hey everybody, welcome to episode 8 of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. Let's get our LP Hardcore game fired up here. When we had last left off, uh, we had made ourselves a bunch of moon landings over on our moon landings, much of Minmus landings on Minmus. And came back with a whole bunch of surface samples, including a uh, materials lab and some goo studies. And uh, we now have like 1,674.3 science. So as is always the case, we will head into the old science center and spend that first. Um, we can start getting into the new gigantic rocket parts. Uh, these are the... Yeah, these are the... These, these rocket parts are bigger than Rockomax, believe it or not. Um... Very heavy rocketry, and that costs 550 science. So we will keep pushing out the most expensive node we have. Boop! Um, and that's the end of that tree. That doesn't go anywhere anymore. I uh, want, um, yes, Clampatron docking ports. What do we have here? Uh, wheels and stuff from rovers? Nah, I'll hit the old docking port. And that gets us to. Uh, nuclear propulsion for 300 science. We will definitely grab that. Ding! Uh, back down here on the bottom of the tree, uh, more power systems. Is there more research available? Here's a little bit more research. Um, dun -dun 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 -dun. Looking for more scientific experiments. I guess we'll grab this one. More better power stuff. And we still have 503 science left. Oh my goodness, what to get, what to get. More science, of course. Seismic accelerometer. Yeah, uh, that would be awfully, awfully cool, though. Okay, and we will research that for 300 science. We now have 204 science left, which is still enough to get another node. Oh my goodness. Um, precision engineering. It's as good as any, I suppose. Or we can even, with 204, we can afford two of these. So how about um, how about advanced construction and uh, advanced flight control, giving us RCS and all that kind of stuff that we need for docking and all sorts of those things. What's this? Precision engineering. I don't have enough enough go for that. All right, research that for 90 points. That is it for us in the research center. Let's take a look in the science archives. So we have quite a bit of science uh, that we've gathered from Minmus. We could do one more landing there and uh, come back with some seismic readings and stuff like that with the new instruments that we have. Or we can see about planning a mission that's a bit more ambitious. I think it might be time to make an interstellar craft Interstellar. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, interplanetary craft and head for Duna. So um, we'll go into the into the mission control here. Another rescue mission. A splashdown test. Test. Here we go. Explore Duna. Explore Ike. Once again for gigantic rewards. High prestige. Uh, 300,000 there, 329,000 uh, there. And these are never expiring. What else do we have? Moon, Minmus. Uh, hey, test the LVN atomic rocket motor on escape trajectory out of Kerbin. That, uh, we should be able to definitely uh, do that mission. Okay, we're going to go with those three missions, uh, Mid Miss Moon, Moon, and Miss Rescue uh, on a suborbital. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's it. All right, let me give you a rundown of, um, of this rocket and its staging. Uh, first, we have all of these uh, little engines plus the main sail fire off. Hopefully giving this thing plenty of thrust as these things all decouple to lift up this massive rocket. And then we begin as discarding tanks over asparagus staging. 
Once this center fuel tank is uh, expired, we will decouple it and activate a nuclear engine, which has ridiculous uh, ISP. And uh, that, that gets us up into our interplanetary stage here. <clears throat> our interplanetary stage is a central fuel tank with a set of uh, decoupling fuel tanks that go around the end here. Uh, each time you decouple a fuel tank, your ISP uh, improves significantly. So that'll be uh, really handy. And then we have, uh, so this craft, part of the craft, will actually be left in orbit um, <clears throat> while we take this ship down to do our stuff. Um, and this ship should be able to be capable of landing on some place like Ike, which is where we're headed. We're headed to Duna and Ike, hopefully, um, with this whole ship. And then, of course, we, we move all of our, we grab all of our scientific exper experiments, move the data into the pod, and return home with the pod. So we will save that and launch to see how we do. Uh, I do see one quick problem I want to solve, which is these instruments end up being on symmetry when they shouldn't have been. Double check my action groups to make sure they're still assigned. Yep. Is that battery on, was on that symmetry? No. Okay, <clears throat> that should do it. We have a little bit of RCS to come back up and dock with the um, <clears throat> with our main ship here uh, once we once we return from our landing destination, and then we can continue on flying other places um, and all that good stuff. So, without any more ado, we'll get onto the launching portion. Okay, we're launching a ship. This massive thing, which is set f uh, to launch and hopefully reach Ike. <clears throat> um, Jebediah Kerman, once again, we're going. We're 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 mission bound for Duna. Here's our contracts: establish orbit around Duna, uh, get some science, land on Duna. That'll be that'll be. I don't think we'll be able to pull it off with this ship, but we'll do that later on. And um, and achieve orbit around Ike is the explore Ike goal. Um, I used probably 300,000 funds on this rocket. Uh, and it might be, <clears throat> it might not return that much on the investment. But we will see how everything goes. So uh, I'm kind of hemming and hawing here. Double check my staging. Staging, all that goes. Decouple, decouple, decouple couple around the horn orbital maneuvering engine uh, decoupling fuel stages landing engine ditching the landing engine and recovery okay that is good enough for now <clears throat> and let's go ahead do a quick save just in case the game crashes and uh, whoa we're at full throttle and I think we're ready to to launch. Yep, <clears throat> our ship is up and away. Looks nice and stable. All of our fuel consumption is as uh, as expected. This is an awfully tall rocket, so there's a lot of force being applied up here. I want to be a little bit careful. Perfect separation. Okay, throttle up. Here we go. We are on our way to Ike. <clears throat> uh, that main sail is going to overheat unless I back off the throttle a little bit. It's surrounded by a whole bunch of little rocket motors. We're climbing up nicely. Each of these little booster stages falling away and doing their job. Okay, we are at max Z for now more or less this massive fuel tank has so much juice in it <clears throat> yeah I'm going awfully fast actually which is which is fine we'll keep on climbing up at this pace 780 meters per second Okay, it is time to aim this ship over to the horizon. That, uh... 
Okay, we no longer have maneuvering from these thrusters, so... This is all torque all the time now. Got to be a little careful how I do this. We are gaining velocity quickly. This mainsail has so much power. Um, yep. <clears throat> Pull up the orbit ball and see how we're doing on our trajectory. I want to make sure I've got to be careful about my rocket over oscillating and breaking in half. <laughs> With the new physics engine, that's not really supposed to be a problem. Um, but, <clears throat> just in case, I'm taking it a little easy on my turns here. We are gaining altitude like a madman. Okay. Alright, we're going to coast, and this mainsail should be able to get us almost all the way, if not all the way, to orbit. We're using a little bit of electrical charge. This thing made it into orbit really fast. <clears throat> okay, we are coming up on uh, 18, 17, 16 throttle up. And here we go. Fuel consumption rate is 38. This stage is probably going to run out of juice. Yep. Okay, next stage is set. Here we go. And that is good enough. All right, let's check the fuel from these tanks. We have plenty. And now we're going to see about setting ourselves off for Duna. I bet you anything that um, we're at a pretty bad phase angle, actually. Okay, this is it. Uh, you can see by our angle here, that's pretty close to 45 degrees. It's like, it's supposed to be 44.89 or something like that. Uh, and we will take control of Tiger 7, which has been orbiting Kerbin for a while, running on solar power. Uh, ship looks fine. Jeb looks happy as a clam. And we're going to actually plan and escape trajectory burns so first things first set this as target second thing second we need to burn uh, plan an escape trajectory burn which sends us prograde with respect to Kerbin. so it might be up about here uh even could be even further we'll see Okay, that puts us behind Duna, apparently. Must have launched a little bit late. <clears throat> but we can we can fix that in course corrections. Um, once we get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. All right, uh, we are at T minus five. I'm just going to do a quick correction here. T minus five minutes, I should say. Um, since this is a seven minute burn, it's going to be a burn of good duration. I will uh, start this burn at T minus uh, 330. So we'll just time warp up to 330 here really quick. 41, 40, 53, 35. Okay, <clears throat> and... We are now ready for our ejection burn out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Here we go, full throttle. And this is going to be seven minutes of firing off this nuclear engine. We use the nuclear engine uh, to do this kind of stuff because the specific impulse is 800 seconds. That's a, a measurement of the efficiency of the engine. Basically, the higher that number, the uh, more efficient the engine is going to be. The basic, the, the the more the more actual change in velocity you get per unit of fuel. 
Okay, we have about 30 seconds left on this burn, and you can see as our periapsis grows rapidly here, we are now on an escape trajectory, and we're just adding some velocity to get us on our way off to Duna. Come on, ship, get on the right vector here. <clears throat> 45 meters per second to go. Any moment now, we'll be cutting down these thrusters. All right, that is it. <clears throat> How about that? Uh, I can't see much from here. But, um, yeah, we're on escape trajectory. See you later, Kerbin. All right, here we are. We have just left Kerbin's sphere of influence. Let's see if we can't uh, look back and see our little home planet there. Yeah, there they are. There's Kerbin and the moon way back there on our way out to Duna. Uh, now it is time for us to make a correction burn. So, uh, first things first. Duna set his target. We're actually um, going to be rendezvousing pretty close to a node, which will make life which will make life a lot easier. So right about here, I need to add a correction burn just to tweak how we're going to be approaching Duna, and I'll be using almost exclusively prograde retrograde radial in and radial out maneuvers to do this. So we're looking for a Duna encounter. There's the target position at closest approach, and this is where we are. So we're actually a ways behind. Let's see what uh, changing the old radial on this does. If I change it a lot, say. Put some more juice in this goose. More radial? There we go. Yeah. So I want to try to use the least amount of thrust I can. But it looks like <clears throat> another four minute burn course correction to finish this off. Um, now here's the question, what happens if I bring this? We're one, that's one hour away from us. If I bring it back to say 10 minutes away from us, that is <laughs> gives us more than six minutes to plan. Um, well, we know what we're doing, so let's get back in the maneuver node and wipe it and start over again. Add a maneuver. Haul it over to about, say, uh, 10 minutes away. Okay, now. Prograde. I get this on the same... If we go this way, does it help? Nope, that's the opposite of helping. Can I set that as a... No. Oh, you silly thing. Oh, zoom in. Grab my maneuver, zoom out. <clears throat> Separation for four million kilometers, four point two million kilometers, four point six million kilometers. Okay, yeah. So we got to add a bunch of this, really. One point four million. And there's a Duna encounter <clears throat> after about a four minute burn. So that is all set. Now let's go find that maneuver. Okay, before we uh, engage this burn, we got a little bit of time. We'll get a crew report when we're in space high over the sun and transmit that back. The other reports we couldn't do but while that's going on, we'll have Jeb get out and give us an EVA as well. 
which you feel kind of small right now. You hope you know where you are going. Yeah, I'm not sure that we do. Um, and we will transmit that back as well. So that gives us a bunch of science. Gives us a bunch of science just for leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. Um, and we are facing directly toward the sun. So I am going to fast forward a bit until we get to this maneuver node, and I'll catch you guys there. Okay, we are seconds away from this maneuver. In fact, I should fire up the rockets now. And this is going to be another nice long burn, uh, four uh, minutes and something. <clears throat> um, four minutes, 22 seconds remaining, actually. But now that we're in deep space, we don't have to worry about uh, being pulled around by Kerbin. Um, all these maneuvers become a whole lot more simple. So going to a place like Duna or Eve or some other planet <clears throat> is, you've already sort of seen it... Um, if you haven't, if you're not sure exactly how to do it yourself, maybe you're newer to Kerbal Space Program, you're just tuning in and joining the channel or whatever, going interplanetary is no more difficult than moving from one moon to the other. Um, or a particular orbit, so say low Kerbin orbit to a moon. Uh, it's really just a matter of scale. Instead of moving from an orbit around Kerbin to the moon, uh, you're moving from Kerbin to another planet. So it's not that hard. When you're setting up your maneuver with the moon, you'll wheel around and maneuver until you find a sweet spot that gets you an encounter. The same is pretty much true <clears throat> with establishing an orbit with another planet, uh, except for instead of moving your orbit around, you sort of have to wait for the planet to be in the right position to, to depart. And that's what we did. We waited till Kerbin, which is now behind us, was about roughly sort of maybe a little bit 45 degrees behind Duna and in doing so that gave us a pretty decent launch opportunity to uh, launch from Kerbin and make a make a burn for Duna so that's where we're headed right now I will check in with you guys oh, let's see how this fuel is doing okay this fuel tank is spent I am going to double check that I'm staging the right one. I was getting nervous about this. Okay. That fuel tank is no longer needed. And we are now burning on this tank here. And that actually also reduces our burn time because we've gotten rid of dead weight. <clears throat> dead weight in deep space. See you later, fuel tanks. And this maneuver is coming to a close. There we go. Let's see how the axles look. Pull out here, and uh, there we go. We have ourselves a Duna encounter in 258 days. Everything from here on out is coasting. Um, and we have ourselves solar panels here, so we have plenty of juice in this goose. We've dumped off a couple of extra fuel tanks that we no longer need. There's Kerbin and and uh, Moon way back there. But we are now leaving them behind completely on our way to Duna. So I will check in with you guys when we are closer to the uh, Duna encounter. All right, <clears throat> according to our map, we are about as far away from the Duna Encounter as we are from the uh, Duna Periapsis. So this is where I will make fine grain adjustments <clears throat> on this on my trajectory here. <clears throat> okay, we are coming in underneath Duna basically, so we're just going to Tilt this guy up like so to cross Duna's orbit better. Yep. I'm going to cross the equator. And radial in. Tilt 
till we essentially get a periopsis that's well you know what <clears throat> that actually gives us an Ike encounter right there okay uh, with a little bit of tweaking of this maneuver node I have actually scheduled myself a nice little intercept uh, we swing under Duna and come within uh, 54 kilometers of Ike so when we get to Ike's uh, sphere of influence that's when we'll do another correction burn to um, actually we could do another correction burn at our moon at our at the Duna periapsis so once we reach the Duna periapsis we'll see uh, what kind of correction burn we can do there but for now for now we need to find this maneuver node and get ready to to execute it uh, I'm not actually gonna wait I'm gonna aim at it where are you hiding up there Okay, so <clears throat> I am going to fire up these engines and start hauling this thing in to a better encounter. And I'll just be keeping an eye out for that uh, encounter with Ike. Still have solar power burning here. Yes, we do. Okay, now let's watch this periapsis change as we apply thrust. <clears throat> I just want to get it down to the smallest point that I can, really. And we'll figure out that, what that message was all about. Passing within 300 kilometers of Ike. Okay, this is minimum throttle right here. And that is it. Looks like 63 kilometers away from Ike is as close as we're going to get for now until we actually get to our encounter. So back to our ship, and we will keep an eye on Duna as we coast in. Where is Duna anyway? It uh, should be over here. Should be basically that way. Ah, there it is. 